In my last video, I explained what a PID controller was, how to use it, and some other things about it, mostly consisting of what it actually is, the details of how it functions, and how to build one in TrailMakers. This video is a focus on an example of that, since multiple people asked. In this video, I will be focusing on showing how to install it and my process of doing so, specifically onto an aircraft to control its angles. I personally think that this is one of the worst uses of a PID controller because while it is good at this task, there are many complications. And a lot of the time, you could just make a plane more stable or you could simply get good with controlling it. But if you do want to automate it, PID controllers are probably the most reasonable way to do it. This is a video of how I applied a PID controller to my very unstable J20. As you can see in the background footage, this is a J20, which I made, really like it by the way, really in, in detailed uh, plane, lots of neat little features. Anyway, this version is manual. Uh, there is no stabilization software, nothing at all. I have also added visualizers for pitch on, for my inputs, for pitch on the vertical stabilizers, uh, as well as roll, so you get a rough idea of what buttons I'm pressing so you can see how responsive it is. And as you can see, I have to pretty much constantly stabilize it to get it going level and to get it going in a somewhat straight line. Believe it or not, I'm not trying to do flips with it all the time. I'm actually trying to fly relatively straight and level. But as you can also see, it's very hard. Aerodynamic instability is both very good and very bad. Because on one hand, it means that you can turn really fast. But on the other hand, it means that it's very hard to fly straight. So, how can you get the best of both worlds? How can you retain the stupid fast turn rate of something like thrust vectoring, but also how do you retain the ability to go straight and level? And so, unstable aircraft with systems to stabilize it manually, through PID controllers for example, is one such way to get the best of both worlds. So the first thing that I have to address is why not the simple route? What I have suggested previously is to just use two speed sensors, one pointing up, one pointing down. Whenever the plane starts pitching up, the one below will start detecting the air, and you can use it to pitch down. Same applies for going up. This is a form of bang-bang control. It's called that because it bangs from one extreme to the other, making a banging noise. As such, it is a kind of unstable. It serves its job, it's stable enough, but it's not consistent. It's very slow to start. If It's also very slow to stop. It's dependent on its speed and molten, just generally unresponsive. For example, if I start holding a turn button, it doesn't start turning until a, like a half a second later. Same thing for stopping. And while it does work, at higher speeds it becomes very hard to control, as if the system wasn't even there half the time. And at very low speeds, it's not even really necessary. It's just inconsistent. So if you do want to automate the process, it's best usually to use something like a PID controller, which can handle a whole bunch of situations a lot better. It's not perfect but it still is better than nothing. And it's more importantly, it's simpler than what, I will, what, than what I am about to go into. The first thing that you need to do to get a functional PID controller is figure out what metric you're gonna be using. What is gonna be considered the thing that you need to keep stable? Because in this case, it's the orientation, but how do we measure that orientation? Do we measure it with the absolute angle with the relative to the world using angle sensors? Sure, we can do that, but then we also have to keep in mind how, in that case, the angle sensors might not work too well when they get flipped upside down and the controls get flipped, or some other things. Or do we do something that's, that measures the angle relative to the air, which would be the angle of attack, which is relative to the plane's orientation? and we could also use a third method, using very weak gyros on a very weak servo, 
to measure where the nose was pointing previously. Um, I used it as a stabilization method for the angles on a different system. It is arguably the best option, but at the same time, it has physical components, which means it requires a lot of volume for it not to hit itself. It requires a lot of like complexity, space, time for it to function because you know physics takes a second to like do the physics calculations. It's as a whole functional, but it's not the best option. Um, and AOA, which is what we will be doing, the angle of attack, angle of attack being the difference between where the plane is pointed and the velocity that the plane has. Basically, the difference between the direction of the nose and the direction of the speed. So how do you actually calculate that? Well, first you measure the vertical speed using speed sensors, which you have to double up because unless they're perfectly in the center, you want one on each side so that if the plane rolls, it doesn't it might subtract from one, but it'll add to the speed of the other. So that's just to um, ignore any roll movements. Um, same applies to forward. Then you add all the signals together as necessary. Then you want to divide one by the other so that then you could feed them into the function block arctan. Arctan, arctangent, converts from the ratio between vertical movement and horizontal movement into a degree value of that ratio. It basically produces the angle of attack, the alpha, in this case, the way that we have it set up. As you can see, logic isn't that complicated. Uh, I just have doubled up on a lot of blocks, a lot of the speed sensors, and have added a few blocks to add all the signals together. But really, the actual arctan is only like the arctan function block itself, plus division, plus a couple of other things, and that's really it to get the whole thing functional. So, now that we have our metric on which it's, everything's going to be running, it's going to be effectively our error value. The thing that the PID controller will be trying to set to zero. And then it's simply applying a PID controller, same as last video. For the proportional section, the light blue adds or subtracts to the alpha value, alpha being the same thing as angle of attack, the alpha being uh, and adding or subtracting to the alpha to set different target alphas. So I can add to the alpha value of the plane to make the proportional part of it think it needs to pitch up or subtract to make it think it needs to pitch down. These light blue blocks do exactly that. While I'm holding W, it sends a signal of uh, plus or minus 50, 50 degrees in this case. Um, and when I let go, it automatically sets it back to zero using these other blocks. Then it simply divides the output and it rescales it to a reasonable output scale because, you know, the degrees are output on like uh, negative 90 to 90, but the final outputs need to be negative 1 to 1. So this section just multiplies it by 0, 0.0 whatever to rescale it to be a reasonable size with the pink being the final output. For I, it's just like how I explained it in the last video for PIDs, just using an accumulator. This is to cover all the steady state errors and to make it actually get to the point where it wants to be. And for the derivative, you just want to subtract it from its past self to see the change from its current to its past self, that giving you the rate of change. This works because you're adding a signal plus a negative version of that signal. But because the negative version of that signal has to go through another logic step, that means it's delayed by one logic step, meaning that the signal gets there one frame later. This difference in time means that you're basically adding, rather you're subtracting, since one of them is negative, you're subtracting the current alpha from the alpha one frame ago, and that gives you uh, an estimate of the rate of change. What, how fast the alpha is changing. And then again, the same trick with multiplication by 0, 0.0 whatever to rescale the values to tune it. These are primarily the values that you want to use for tuning. As a whole, this gives good results. It's consistent, especially in the turn rate. It's easier to control, it's more responsive, and works at varied speeds. Much better than the simple 
version of the controls for un for unstable aircraft, and much better than just using pure unstable aircraft. But sometimes it undercorrects, sometimes it overcorrects, and the whole system is just a bit too slow for some changes and some corrections. So why does this happen? Well, the simple answer is I built the front canards using hinges. Simply put, hinges are bad. Because as good as they are and as small as they are, meaning that I can fit them into nice aesthetic builds without them, having stand, without them standing out too much, in this case, a very specific detail comes into play. In my last video, I mentioned in passing how PID controllers work best with linear systems. Hinges are not linear. In this demo, you can see how, the fifth, how when I input a 50% strength input, it does not equal to half of the degrees. When I input a 25% signal, it does not equal 25% of the final output degrees. Unlike a servo, where if I input half the final strength, it'll output half the final angle. If I input a quarter of the final strength, it'll output a quarter of the final angle. As you can see here, as I swap between them, servos are also just simply generally faster. This fixes pretty much all of our previous problems. So when applying this and applying it to the aircraft, we can see that with this change and some retuning because of the new control systems, it is better, it is snappier, it is even smoother. But now it always overcorrects. Personally, I don't find that to be a big problem. I, I need to divide the signal even more from the proportional part of the PID controller. The problem with this is that I can't, not without using even more logic. And this thing is already getting very bloated with logic, and I personally want to keep that down to a minimum. And I can't set the accumulator any less than 0 0.01, so I would have to use another layer of division logic to divide it even more. In fun fact, logic can operate less than 0.01, it just doesn't show it. So although it wouldn't display anything, and it would display the output as 0, to the servo, there would be an actual output. It would just be so small that numbers that the numbers it's outputting just don't register on the number displays. And say, okay, well, if you just need it to be less responsive, if it's constantly overcorrecting, why can't you just divide the angles and make it less responsive as a whole? The answer is then, sometimes it stalls out. Sometimes it turns so hard that it can't recover. Having the ability to turn the control surfaces 30 degrees really helps with those harsh recoveries. So, as you can see, that's not an option either. But... I want you to remember, this is for me. I want it to be consistent. I prefer consistency and speed over precision. What you would want would be different. So as such, you would tune it differently. This is a personal project made for me to fly. Just remember that when you're doing it yourself, you can change what you want out of all these little trade-offs. For me, the goal was something that I can use in an actual fighter jet. Something that has very snappy responses and something that when I tap it, it flicks the nose pretty quickly and something with a good consistent turn rate in a turn fight. Something that I can use for multiple roles, but something that I won't necessarily be using for, I don't know, like very precise stunts. As such, what I want might be different from what you want. And this is a case of that. I don't want it to add more logic because that's more vulnerabilities that can get more shot off during combat. However, for you, if you want to make a stunt plane, that might be a worthy trade-off. So this is really the final thing. From here, the final version just has a few corrections, just cramming all of the uh, logic into the aircraft, minor patches specifically to the angle of attack because uh, basically the problem is, is that because there's gravity, the integral will always make the AOA try to be zero. What that means is that it'll always pitch down and try to align with gravity to make the angle of attack zero. As a result, I had to add a 
small accumulator, which always adds a very small amount to the uh, other accumulator for the I value, for the integral part of it. What the state has basically made it think that the aircraft is constantly uh, slightly negative in AOA and therefore made it constantly have a slightly positive integral response, which made it constantly pull a, I think it was like five degree nose up, five degree alpha. And for context, most planes have like a very small nose up constantly, uh, simply due to the fact that it generates more lift if, they, if their nose is pointed up slightly. And yeah, um, just remember, the AOA metric is bad. There are other ways to do it. And I personally think that using PID controllers for aircraft is really not the best thing, especially not for fighter jets, seeing as how much logic there is and how much of it can get shot off. It is a viable use for them, and it is useful in some situations, in fact, in a lot of situations, because as you can see, comparing the before and after of completely manually controlled J-20 versus the one with the fully mapped out PID controller, you can easily see the difference in control and just how much better it is. However, this is a lot of logic. It will get destroyed in combat, and that's what most people use it for in trail makers. Gyro stabilizers just flat out do the same job, but better. Using other metrics and other systems could also achieve similar results. Or you could just make the plane as a whole more stable and just make a very well-balanced aircraft instead of having to resort to making it unstable and then using other artificial methods to stabilize it. And as a final note, all these creations will be posted on the workshop. Um, well, maybe not all of them. I think I'll just post the final versions and the manual controlled versions um, and like some of the pre-final versions, or maybe not, maybe I'll post everything. Anyway, the links will be in the descriptions for you to look at them and dissect them yourself to see the exact values that I used for tuning the PID controller. And yeah, that's primarily the end of the video. Um, channel updates, I got sick again. That's always fun. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, comment what you want in the next video, I guess. That's it. Goodbye.